What is up everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Next Gen Geek channel. I'm your host Darius and in this video more Avengers content and specifically we'll be talking about war zones. How do they work? Is this game open world? Is it not? And what type of missions can we expect? So in this video we'll be diving more deep into war zones and how they all play out. So a lot of people are asking, is this an open world game? Not in the traditional sense like Spider-Man PS4 or Arkham Knight or Horizon Zero Dawn. It's not in that sense. It's more Destiny Kingdom Hearts like where it's basically hub open world like areas that we can still fully explore. And that hub open world like area is a war zone with a dedicated mission that we have to complete. Again, it's not incentivizing you to do it right away. It's more like here's an area, here's a objective, but then you have other objectives and other things you can do within this explorable area. And again, I think that's pretty cool. For me, an Avengers game, I want hub open world like areas. The Avengers are a global team. You have your West Coast, your East Coast. You have them, they have bases in the Arctic in recent comics. Uh, like, they're all over the place. They're all over the world. They're not central to one area per se. Yes, during its creation uh, in the Marvel comics, they have definitely been centered around San Francisco and New York. But again, now, modern day times, they're more global than ever before. So with War Zones, you can explore these areas, and within these areas, you can access so many different things, such as going to shield caches, which we will be talking about late, at a later date, as well as just exploring, having fun, taking on other enemies, instead of doing that main objective. But now, what other types of missions can we expect from War Zones? Well, we have a few. One of them are iconic missions. So iconic missions are not exactly heroic missions. Heroic missions are dedicated campaign stories that's single player. So that's your campaign mission. That's your campaign. That's the story of Marvel's Avengers. That's heroic missions. Iconic missions are dedicated or while well, hero missions are that basically they did something similar for Warzone missions where you where these missions are crafted as unique hero stories that evolve around that specific Avenger. So let's say and it's a chain of basically it's a chain of missions for that dedicated character. So if you just want to play Thor, let's say stories like missions, you can do that. You have that option. They're putting that in the game. It depends on how much and the variety, but they are putting it in the game, which I think is going to be really cool. And these basically, these iconic missions revolve around things like, let's say, the basically the aftermath of A-Day and how that affected each Avenger. Well, how did, why was Hulk, what are the ramif like, what are the ramifications for Hulk being basically the big green for so long or how does Iron Man feel about AIM taking his technology and redoing it for the evil schemes that they're doing. They're, they're freaking AIM, what do you expect? <laughs> so that's basically iconic missions and at the end of each iconic mission you get their iconic outfit as well as iconic gear for I guess uh, character. They haven't dived too deep in that but again that's just one of the missions that you can do in a variety. So now, next up are faction missions. If you're familiar with Destiny and Anthem, you are familiar that there are different factions within the tower or the little hub. I don't play Anthem. I think that game is shit. So whatever you call it, that thing is the that you're, air, you're in and you get your gear. You, you get what I'm saying. Basically like the tower, right? And how the tower in Destiny has different factions and you can get missions from them. This is basically Marvel's on take on that with the Marvel flair and style that we all know and love. So essentially you can go to shield agents or in humans and they can give you a mission and you have to go around you know the world and do these to get uh, resources to defend strongholds that sort of thing and as you do that your helicarrier actually grows in size not physically but just the amount of people that are now on your helicarrier just continuously grows and you get just get more access to these missions. The next mission type is drop zone. So drop zone is pretty simple. It's a short mission with a single objective such as defending allies or taking on aim structures and bases. So pretty simple. It's more like you get in, get out, you know, that sort of thing. Next up, I think a lot of Destiny fans and even are going to be pretty excited about this. Because it reminds me of strikes and raids. 
and these are called vaults. So vaults are essentially large explorable spaces that take some legwork to uncover. So essentially to access a vault, you have to go around the world, locate hidden shield caches that has the coordinates of these vaults. Once you get it, you can now get into the entrance and fight your way inside to breach the vault before you reap your reward. So this is, if does it sound like, like a raid or strike? Yeah, it does, except it's in that Marvel flair, which again, for me, I don't mind. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. What I like about this is that you actually have to uncover them, and it's not necessarily right then and there all the time, and it's easy to access. I like that we have to dive deep. We have to, you know, they're enticing us to really explore this world, why we should be connected, why we should keep going back. And I think vaults and even the other missions we're about to talk about are a great way to do that. Great, don't worry. I don't know why. <laughs> I feel like I'm Elmer Fudge right now. <laughs> Great way to do that. So next up for you single player player people like myself, I love my single player stuff. I love my single player content. And I also like something that's familiar to a horde mode like in Gears. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, which don't worry, I'm about to get into it. They're calling this hives. So hives are essentially aim strongholds located throughout the world. Again, as your players, you have to uncover their location and fight your way through a gauntlet of increasingly challenging aim defenses in order to disable them. I like this. This is basically sort of like a horde mode. And if I can keep replaying it, and they have, again, more variety and more stuff to do with these hives, especially years to come, I'm gonna be satisfied and again all of this stuff all these missions I'm telling you you can play by yourself or with a friend whereas with destiny I've always felt that with destiny you they kind of they really try to force you to play with your friends you know like you really can't do this alone you 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 have to be with people so I like that crystal dynamics is taking what they do best with single-player games like the Tomb Raider series and they're taking some elements of what's great with the live service and they're just literally putting it together, sprucing it up, giving it that God of War flair combat, but in a Marvel Avenger look and style and feel, which again, I dig. I love the Marvel Universe, and if you're Marvel fans, you should love this too. As the Avengers, you want to play with your friends. Like, like, let's just face it. You want to get together, right? Get your headset on, you know? You get your old Marvel uh, Avengers uh, Earth Mightiest Hero soundtrack going, you play that song, or you get that end game going, where Captain America says Avengers Assemble at the end, you get that track going, and you're just going, you're like, okay, let's go people, let's go! Avengers! Assemble! And then you just go right in, you got that theme music going, Duh. yeah, that, that sounded corny. I'm sorry. I'm not. But anyway, so we're going to get to the last one that we at least know of and they've confirmed. And this is the one I'm really pumped about and I'm really excited and I hope they at least have 15 of these that are all different. And that's called Villain Sectors. So one of my complaints with Marvel Spider-Man PS4 is that I wish there were dedicated quest lines to a specific villain so that you have to experience that quest line, understand them, you know, of course there's a story element to it and an understanding to them. Uh, maybe not sympathy, but maybe empathy. And at the end, you fight that iconic villain, such as Mysterio. Um, maybe not Venom or Carnage, because they're teasing that in Spider-Man PS4 2. Uh, but like, you know, Hydro Man, Sandman, Mysterio. And I, I wish Spider-Man did that, because I know the Arkham series did that to a certain extent in the base game, and then they did more of that in the Season of Infamy, Infamacy DLC. Say what you want about that DLC, because it freaking sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it, it's, it was $40 for all of that. That's like 10 minutes of gameplay. Yeah, no thank you. I wish I never bought that. But anyway, so the villain sectors, they're basically missions culminate with a boss fight. And these boss fights range from some of the deadliest constructs from AIM or notable Marvel villains that are working in tandem with AIM. And I think we've seen a few of that already. And last year around E3 and even afterwards, we see a big giant like AIM dead dreadbot essentially. You see all the Avengers are like attacking and Iron Man flying up. I think we just got a glimpse of one of those villain sectors. And again, you might be thinking, well that's an AIM bot, what else is there? Well, I think we got a tease of another villain and that I think a lot of people aren't realizing and that's Abomination. So we see Abomination apparently looks like he's going to play somewhat of a major role in the story mode, 
But also, I think he's also going to be another uh, villain that we get to fight. That's a, essentially a boss fight that we get to experience on the offline hand, side of things. So instead of being online or whatever, you know, we we do fight him in the story, but also we fight him as his own mission and big boss fight. And I think we get a glimpse of that, really, at the end of the War Table livestream. You see at the end, before they immediately cut it off, that we see Abomination right then and there, and Thor is, like, tossing hammer at him. And we see, like, Abomination basically has, like, green gas all around him. I think that's, like, a gamma poisoning effect that does poison on you uh, over time. And we see him glowing, and it constantly keeps glowing. Or maybe, like, he's about to, like, suddenly, like, do a, ga a gamma bomb right then and there. And it's going to deal lots amount of damage, and you have to either get away, and maybe after that, he has to go on a cooldown, and then that's when you can hammer on him. You know, so I think something like that's going to be really cool. Dedicated boss fights. Uh, let's say, let's say, and the thing is, they even said that these villains that you experience even early in the game, they will change and evolve throughout the story. So basically, let's say Abomination is somewhat weak in the beginning, right? And we take him out pretty easily. He won't be easy from there on out. And I don't think it's necessarily going to be, hey... Uh, you're just not doing a lot of damage like Destiny does, how it's like, it's basically a, a bullet sponger. I don't think that. I think if, if we can customize our, our ability to that depth and degree, as I stated in my combat video, I think the same can be applied to the villains. And these villains are just going to get smarter too. They're going to not only maybe, of course, I think they're also going to take more damage or it's going to be harder to take down just by attacking. But I also think we're going to see them do new stuff as well. New entirety, like, different animations and attacks that they're going to do. And we're going to have to really think about how we're going to approach them. So, if this is this, this is what they're going for, I'm 100% down. I just don't want maybe 10 or less. Because I think that's a bit... That's, that's pretty low for something that seems very dedicated to also the single player people. Of course, you can play all of this multiplayer, all of this with your friends. But um, I think a good 15 or more, maybe 15 uh, villain sectors, each one is different. Each one is a different villain. Not every one is like an aim dreadbot, essentially. But like, let's say you have Graviton, right? What if Graviton in this game, in this world, is an inhuman? He, and if you don't know who Graviton is, in the comics, he goes by the name Franklin Hall, and he gains the abilities to manipulate gravity. So let's say they implement that within the game, and we kind of see not Franklin Hall Graviton, but General Talbot Graviton in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show. So if you hear Graviton and you think Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., yes, that is one version, but the version from the comics is Franklin Hall. So it just makes you wonder, like, how many other villains are they going to put in the game? And the fact that we have Inhumans and from the leaked trophy and achievement list, there's a possibility Inhuman, uh, the Kree, can also be a part in this game. So it just makes you wonder the amount of villains, the, diff the uniqueness, and really not just central to just bots, but also like Abomination, maybe Graviton, maybe... Uh, again, the list can go. There's so many Mandarin, if they put, or Mandarin at a later date. And for free. Again, remember, most content, new regions, new characters, all the new missions, everything like that is supposed to be free. So, it makes you wonder, like, just what more can they put into this game, even post-launch. Again, this is the Marvel Universe. It is much bigger than Destiny and Anthem's lore combined. So, the, so the amount of stuff they can put into this game. Ooh, boy, it's... We're about to be in there for the long run. And I'm pretty stoked. And again, if you like this video, and if you any, have, have any other questions, follow me on Twitter. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe and that notification bell to stay up to date on this channel. And of course, share it with your friends and share it to your online friends as well. Because I think more discussion about this and more diving deep into a Marvel Avengers, hopefully for the regular average consumer, can get you more excited about this game as much as I am. Because I can't wait to get my hands on this demo. And I hope you guys... Get your hands on the demo too and, and get a sense of how it feels because I think that's really important. It's about like, hey, we can see all the stuff. We can say it looks generic, whatever. But now, how does it feel when we get our hands? For me, when I played at New York Comic Con, you know, I did not want to leave the booth. I wanted to keep playing and figure other things out because it was just that 
addicting and that much fun. Yes, it was the A-Day demo, but I felt that rush and I the combat felt a bit fluid. Again, it was clunky at times, but as a whole, from a foundational standpoint, I think Marvel Avengers has a lot to live up to, and hopefully people can keep their expectations at a decent level, like how I do. I don't expect everyone to do it, but that's just me. I kind of keep everything level-headed, really analyze, really think about really the foundation. And it looks like the foundation of this game is really freaking strong. And the fact that we're going to get new regions, new characters, new villains over time from the Marvel Universe has me super excited more than like a Destiny or Anthem thing where I still don't know much about the lore. Even if I did read up online, I probably wouldn't be that interested because it hasn't really impacted my personal and professional life in a way that the Mar Marvel Comics and the MCU and the Marvel Universe has as a whole. So again, like I said, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.